it's Platt, and today I show you how to make pepperoni cheddar snack sticks. So let's go. So as many of you may remember, a few weeks back we made uh, snack sticks for the first time. Actually, we used ground bison. Ground bison turned out great. It's a lean meat, real tasty meat. The snack sticks turned out great. Um, we thought that, you know, because of lean meat, you know, and but also the shape that, you know, we may have a variance on time, but it came out four hours, turned out great. So I thought today we'd take it up a notch and now make snack sticks with casings. We're actually going to make pepperoni cheddar snack sticks. Um, in the past, uh, all these videos, we've generally, generally just done one pound batches. Today we're doing a two pound batch. Um, I'm going with ground pork today. You may see in other recipes or other videos similar to this where people do a blend, maybe 50% uh, ground pork, 50% ground beef, what have you. Um, and some of that's done to, to uh, kind of bring down the, the fat content. You throw in a little lean ground beef to bring that down. But two pounds, pretty small batch, so I'm not in a bigger batch of cooking bigger sticks or whatever, I totally get it. But I'm going to go ahead and go with uh, the ground pork, just just ground pork. Uh, people also make uh, turkey pepperoni snack sticks, chicken pepper. So you could use different kinds of meat. And again, you want to be somewhat cognizant of the fat content. I believe this is semi, somewhat lean, leanish. Yeah, this is 85-15 blend, which 90, 90, 10 is what's generally suggested. So we're not too far off on that. Um, so we got that. Um, we're going to have a couple of cups of, uh, I'm just using medium cheddar, but you can play around with pepper jack, Swiss, what have you. But uh, you'll, you'll want it shredded for easy use. And then as far as spices, I'm using the High Mountain Pepperoni Blend Pack. Makes up to 20 pounds. Also comes with the casings, which we'll need. Um, also, we'll need the uh, we'll need the uh, jerky gun because it has the attachments for the snack sticks. And this is something that you will definitely need the jerky gun for. You could find recipes as far as a spice blend to get you know that pepperoni flavor, what have you. But you're going to need the jerky gun, the attachment to, to do the casings. It's just it's impossible to try stuff for yourself. I will leave a link down below for all this stuff, the recipe, and also, you know, where to get the jerky gun, where to get the jerky seasoning, the casings, everything. So uh, if there's anything here you want to get, I'll leave the link down below. So with that being said, let's make some pepperoni cheddar snack sticks. All right, so it's time to prep our meat. Like I said, we're using our pepperoni blend. They have all the spices mixed in for us. So that's going to make our life easy. First thing we're going to do is uh, in a mixing bowl we're going to put half a cup of water. That's just going to help us get these dry ingredients into the meat a little easier. And then next, we're going to put in our two grounds, or two pounds of pork there. And like I said, you can play around if you don't like, you know, if you want to throw in some ground beef instead or a little ground chicken you want to do a blend you know half pork half ground beef feel free um, experiment play around a little bit um, so first thing we're going to add as I get out my chart first thing we're going to add is our is our cure our the cure seasoning. Um, this this one helps preserve the meat. We're going to do one tablespoon and two teaspoons of the cure for two pounds. Uh, they give instructions inside, so if you do a five pound batch or even a one pound batch or whatever, um, they'll give you the measurements. So don't worry about that. So that's one tablespoon and two teaspoons in there. And then next we're going to add our pepperoni blend. Um, again, this is their quote-unquote secret recipe. And you can find recipes for this out there, but 
I am all about making my life easier and trusting the experts, which the people that make these are the experts in this field. We're going to add seasoning, same thing, two teaspoons and one tablespoon. got that all in and now we're gonna mix this up by hand we're gonna get that liquid in there we're gonna get all all those herbs and spices and that cure salt we're gonna get this all in there now normally this is where using the casings is a little different normally if we're making a regular batch of jerky at this point we just throw it like in a ziploc bag or something and let it sit overnight. However, the cure in here is a binding agent and we don't want to let this sit overnight and then try to stuff or put into the casings. So we're going to go ahead, load our jerky gun, and then um, go ahead and stuff the casings and then we'll leave the casings overnight. So let me get this all mixed in then we'll come back with the loaded jerky gun and we'll walk through the, the casings part or going and stuff in the casing so we'll be right back well I got a little lucky I was getting ready to, st <laughs> to stuff this in my jerky gun and I forgot the cheddar so <laughs> luckily we didn't have to go through all that so we're gonna add two cups of cheddar to two pounds so however you want to do this recipe whether you change up the meat or you know use a different cheese roughly one cup of cheese shredded cheese to one pound of beef so we're just gonna dump that in there and again we're gonna get back add it mix it all in and that should be it so let me get this finished and then we'll stuff that gun and we'll come back to put this in our casings all right so now it's time to put on the casings and stuff the casings now this casing real quick one little trick is to spray the nozzle with uh some kind of non-stick coating which we did that's gonna make it easier to put this on now according to the instructions you want the end that's slightly unfurled out front and then the end that's packed here um, this is a little different than if you've worked with sausage casings in the back generally if you made sausage we would soak these before to loosen them up uh, according to the instructions just leaving this in the fridge you get a little more humidity helps keep uh, the casings from drying out so we're gonna go ahead and slide this gently on there all right that would have been tough without that non-stick I can tell you right now um, you want to be gentle with this yep all right just slowly all right all right so now we got loaded and we want to just slowly peel this first part like an inch or two off and then you can just do a little twist here to kind of kind of pinch off have the end and then we're going to slowly start filling this casing now you want a nice even stream um, oh. you don't want to overstuff it but you also don't want air bubbles now in case you do get air bubbles and we'll probably get a few just this is our first time and it happens after you've got this stuff go back and take a fork and then poke a hole in those air bubbles to kind of get them out but you can see here we're starting to get a nice little link um, and if you want to you could twist these off like they do a sausage link if you want to like we could twist this here and just do links like this I'm gonna let this whole thing play out until I have to uh, reload the gun we'll just make a long 
stick that then later we can cut into whatever size. We don't have too many air bubbles. All right, well this seems to be working out nice. And again, at the end you'll just twist another knot and then once you get it cooked, you can cut that off or do with it what you want. But I'm gonna keep stuffing this and then uh, once I get the whole thing stuffed, I'll show you how long this is and then we'll uh, come back to put in the fridge. All right, so we finished stuffing our casings. We've got roughly two pounds here. Now you can see I have kind of different lengths or whatever. This is our first time doing it. Don't, don't worry about that. Everything appears fairly tight. There's not too many big air bubbles. Uh, the only thing I really see is this last little piece. I did not leave quite enough at the end but I think we'll still be all right. Um, everything else seemed to come out nice. Um, if you don't any, didn't know any better, it's almost looked like sausage, which is, just from my reading, this is kind of the step before we get to that point. Um, that may be a possible video in the future, who knows? Let's see how these snack sticks come out first. So I'm gonna take these, these links here that I've created, and I'm going to put them in a bag and we're going to leave them overnight in the fridge. And then tomorrow we'll come back to put in our dehydrator. All right, so it's the next day. Uh, we've let our casings sit in the fridge overnight. We're getting ready to fire up the dehydrator. But real quick, I want to talk about something. Um, because this is the first time we've used casings. Also, as you can tell, this by far is the thickest piece of meat we've done as far as jerky snack stick making. We're going to have to be real careful about the internal temperature. Um, if you decide to do this in an oven, you want to sit the oven for 200 and in about two hours check, get you a meat thermometer. You'll, you'll want a meat thermometer that sticks into the heart of the meat and you want to get that temperature to 165. In the oven, 200 degrees for a couple hours should get you there. In the dehydrator, depending on the type of dehydrator, Whatever sittings you have, most of the time these dehydrators will max at 165, so you'll obviously want to use 165 because that's what we want to hit interior temperature wise. This dehydrator is automatically set for 165, so we're just going to do like we normally do. We're going to let this go for about four hours, and then we'll come back with, and I have a proper meat thermometer, uh, we'll come back and check, and if we've hit that 165, we're good. If not, we'll keep it going. But you want to make sure, and especially because this is pork inside, you want to make sure you hit that 165 degrees just to be safe. So let me get this started, and then we'll come back in four hours to do a thermometer read. All right, gang, so it's been about four hours. I've turned off the dehydrator just so you can hear me. And I've got my cooking thermometer. We're going to check our temperature. We're shooting for 165 degrees. Um, you want to make sure to hit that temperature, especially since we're dealing with pork. Uh, pork just seems to be a little more uh, precarious as far as dealing with food safety. We're just going to stick it in the heart of the meat here. All right. You want to make sure to get a good thick part here, and temperature-wise, we're still reading. Uh, again, you can also do this in the oven instead of a dehydrator. Temperature-wise, we're at 141 degrees, so we're going to need to let this go a little bit more. Uh, we'll give it another hour and then come back and check. All right, gang, it took a little longer than I thought. We were shooting for four hours. We ended, we ended up around a little over six, around six hours or so before we finally hit that internal temperature. You have to hit that internal temperature. I can't... Uh, can't emphasize that enough, but now is the best part. Let's try our pepperoni cheddar snack sticks. We'll cut a piece here. And let's see, oh, a little bit of that cheddar in the middle. Let's give her a taste. Oh, wow. That tastes like real pepperoni. Holy cow, that is great. That cheese just works in the middle. The casing's not too tough to bite through. It's a good bite. We're just, it's a nice thick size stick, nice and meaty. Oh, we are definitely going to do this again. 
Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them in the comment section. Or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Till next time, bottoms up.